Hey everybody, Josh Garrison here again. And in this video, we're going to cover integrating your Salesforce account with the Apollo platform. Now, before I dive in and we configure the integration, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First and foremost is that you're going to want to spend some time cleaning up your Salesforce account if you have a lot of duplicates because Apollo will not do the work of deduplicating Salesforce contacts for you. Any data quality issues you have in Salesforce in terms of duplicates and messy record types and all of that kind of stuff is going to reflect in Apollo. So before you turn this on, it might be worth keeping that in mind. With that being said, to get to this page, just go to the settings wheel in the top right hand corner of your Apollo account. And on the left hand side, scroll down to integrations. Now you are going to need some admin permissions in Salesforce to configure this integration, but assuming you have those, we'll just dive right into it. You can find Salesforce from this list of available integrations. Um, I have already connected my Salesforce account, but if you haven't, it's not very hard. You just hit connect. It's going to kick you over into Salesforce. You'll have to enter your password, some goodness like that. And then it will land you on this page. This is where we can configure all of the various components of the integration with Salesforce and Apollo. First and foremost, we have our pulling records. This is where we can pull records from Salesforce into the Apollo platform. So you can see that listed right here. It's how information is downloaded from Salesforce. So if I click into this and go to view, I have a bunch of configurations that I can set up. First and foremost is, do I want to show my contacts from Salesforce? By default, all of your Salesforce contacts and all your Salesforce leads are going to be pulled into Apollo. And it's not possible to disable this because we have to dedupe the records against the ones we have in our database. What that means, I just said, we're not going to dedupe for you. This is talking about something different. What that means is when you come into Apollo and you go to search, we are immediately going to take all of the people in your Salesforce and we're going to add them to the saved tab. So we're going to deduplicate them against the entirety of the Apollo database. Okay. Um, however, you can, we're going to do that by default, but you can hide your Salesforce contacts for some reason. If you want to do that, you may want to do that. If you have a wonky Salesforce setup and maybe only customers, existing customers are in Salesforce and you want to not have those people be prospected or reached out to something like that. But in general, you're going to want to have this turned on. Now we also have the ability to automatically match leads to accounts in Apollo. So the way Salesforce is set up, a lead converts to a contact and a contact is associated with an account. What this setting will allow us to do is infer the account in Salesforce with a lead in Apollo. Okay. If you're interested to learn more about this, you can click on this little button. It's going to take you to the knowledge base and hopefully you will have bookmarked the knowledge base already. So you'll already be familiar with this. Now you can also initiate a manual pull between Salesforce leads and contacts and your Apollo contacts. You might want to do this if you're like, you know, let's say you've just done a webinar or something and you've manually loaded a bunch of people into Salesforce, but you want to enrich those contacts or you want to email those contacts from Apollo. You might want to uh, initiate a pull manually. Otherwise it does happen every 15 minutes. One thing I'll call out here is that Apollo doesn't have a distinction between leads and contacts like Salesforce does. So in a minute, we're going to have to choose which of those two record types we really want to use as the foundation of our integration. Um, Apollo just has contacts. Salesforce, you've got leads and contacts. So that's something to keep in mind. We can configure basically the exact same settings for accounts. Only this setting is a little different where we can infer missing data for Salesforce accounts with no name or no website. So basically this is just Apollo doing its best to fill in around the edges with your account information in Salesforce. Now we also have the ability to pull opportunity records into Apollo, which you are likely going to want to do. And we can infer your account stages based on your Salesforce opportunities. We can also show those opportunities in Apollo. So in the Apollo platform, we do have this opportunities tab and you can show all of the open opportunities in Salesforce and the opportunities tab. If you so desire, lastly is tasks, which is you basically just can create tasks in Apollo from tasks in Salesforce. You might want to do this. If you have like process builder or workflows set up in Salesforce that will create a, a task on an account. Let's say maybe you have a renewal workflow. Uh, when the account is three months from renewal, you create a task in Salesforce, but your team is working from Apollo. You can have that task created in Apollo. So that is the pulling records from Salesforce. Now we're going to dive into pushing records from Apollo. We first have the ability to push new Apollo contacts to Salesforce. 
This is something that you should be careful about and intentional about. When you create a new Apollo contact, meaning you go into the search tab and you actually save a record for a contact and, and get their contact information, we can push that. We have to decide how we want those to be treated in Salesforce. So this is what I was mentioning earlier. Salesforce has contacts and leads, but we only have contacts. So you have to choose one or the other. Depending on the implementation of your Salesforce, there's no right or wrong answer here. I would say for the most part, leads is probably the right record if you're pushing everybody in at the time that new contacts are created from Apollo. Here's what I mean by that. So the moment somebody goes and they save a record in Apollo, they are prospecting. If you're initiating that record as being pushed into Salesforce, that's most likely going to correspond to the lead record, but not always. You know better than I do. If you don't want to have to mess with that too much, you still have to pick one or the other leads or contacts. But what you can do is you can turn on this setting to only create contacts at certain stages, which we'll talk about in the next video. But basically stages are a way for us to determine in Apollo what our relationship is with that lead. And I'll get to this in a second, but a stage, these are all the stages that we've configured in our Apollo instance. So if we haven't reached out to someone yet, they're cold. If we've reached out to them already, but they haven't replied, then they're engaged, uh, things like that. So what we can do is we can configure this integration to only push people to Salesforce if they reach a certain stage in our Apollo workflow. So maybe we don't want to push everybody that we haven't emailed yet, but as soon as we start working that lead, we want to push them in. And so we would turn this on and we would say, Hey, if they're at the engage stage, push them into Salesforce, something like that. Now we have to configure the source of the contacts that are pushed over from Salesforce. Salesforce does have a source field by default. And so by default, this is going to be Apollo. Lastly is this button pushing guest emails into Salesforce. So as you know, more than likely when you're building a list in Apollo, you have the option of choosing the email status for the contacts that you're prospecting. You can choose verified guest user managed, new data available, whatever you like, and some advanced filters as well for guest emails. So a guest email is an email that Apollo is inferring based on the pattern of email address at that company. So. Apollo often uses first name, last name at Apollo.io, my email, josh.garrison. Okay. So if we have a, one of my colleagues, we have their email in the Apollo platform. We will guess their colleagues based on that pattern. The downside potentially of pushing guest emails into Salesforce is that not all of the guest emails are going to be real because we are guessing. And then you may have incorrect contact information in your Salesforce. So turn this on with caution. Now we can go to the accounts tab and we're going to run through that exact same process. If we are pushing new accounts that we find and save from Apollo, which you can do here, go over here, go to companies, a company in Apollo is an account in Salesforce. So we can push new Apollo accounts to Salesforce. And we can similarly only do that at the certain stage. If we want to do that, then we can also configure which Salesforce field we want to use for the account source because accounts in Salesforce don't have a source by default. So if we wanted to, we could go into Salesforce and create a custom field. But in this instance, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. And by default, it'll come from Apollo. Very similarly with opportunities, but this integration is a little bit more limited. It'll just pull that opportunity information into the opportunities tab. And then lastly, same for activities. I highly recommend that you do turn on the sync of pushing records to Salesforce based on activity because you're likely doing a lot of activity in Apollo. So we want to turn on the outgoing emails that we have sent from Apollo, from our Gmails and any replies to our Apollo emails from our Gmail. We want to push those into Salesforce as well. Just as Salesforce remains that single source of truth. We can do the same for notes, tasks, calls, and meetings or calendar events. This by default is turned off this last run here, push all calendar events. Even if the participants don't exist in Salesforce, you may want to, if you want to turn this on, consider that you may have a meeting with like a group of people, for example, and some of those people in that meeting may not actually be at that buyer. They may not be at that account. They may not be even associated with the deal. Maybe it's a contractor, a consultant, a legal person, whomever. So you may end up with people you don't actually want in your Salesforce, in your Salesforce. Keep that in mind. So we've covered the first two pull records and push records. 
So we're going to skip stage and field mappings really quickly, and we're just going to talk through Salesforce authentication settings and the error log. The authentication settings just allow you to choose an admin's credentials to be the team-wide sync account between Salesforce and Apollo. So you want to use the Salesforce administrator's credentials for this. If you have set up the Salesforce feature assignment rules, which is similar, it's like their lean data, it's their routing rules for how leads get assigned in Salesforce, and you don't wanna to have to recreate that in Apollo, you can turn this on and that will just follow those rules whenever new contacts are added to Salesforce or leads are added to Salesforce from Apollo. If you are deleting records from your CRM and you want that to reflect in Apollo, that's what this does. And the same with merge sync settings. So. We'll merge any records that are merged in Salesforce. If you have five accounts in Salesforce, you merge to one, then we will merge them in Apollo. Going back to the error log, periodically there will be errors in the integration between Salesforce and Apollo. This is where you can see where those errors are and where you can resolve those errors. You may run into errors for a variety of reasons. In this example, there, there may be no contact or lead in Salesforce. You may run into issues with API call limits or something like that. So this is where you can check those. Okay, so before we move on to talk about stages, I do just wanna cover field mappings really quickly, which is this section of the integration. Out of the box, there are fields in Salesforce that you may want to map with Apollo, especially as you consider you're going to be pulling new contact information from Apollo into Salesforce, and maybe you already have existing records in Salesforce you have to decide what you want to do there. If you want to overwrite the information, if the value in Salesforce is different from what's in Apollo, or if you want to autofill the information. Something that I'll call out here is if you manually edit information, that takes the cake. That's always the highest priority. So when we're configuring these mappings, we're really only talking about what happens if you haven't manually changed it. For example, if you're working a lead and they tell you that their email address has changed and you manually change that email address, we're not gonna to touch that. But in any other instance, we can configure how we want these fields to be handled. So what you have here is the field in Apollo on the left. You get to choose which field you want to map to in Salesforce here on the right, and we'll auto populate as many of these as we can for you. And then we have to decide if we want to auto overwrite or auto fill. So if you're missing information in Salesforce, you pull a prospect in from Apollo, do you want us to automatically fill that information out? I recommend you go through these. It's important that you have the main ones, phone number, name, email address, title, company, that kind of thing configured. And then from here, we can do the same thing with our custom fields. So the default fields are what comes out of the box in Salesforce. The custom fields are the fields that you've created. As you can see here, these are all of the custom fields that we have from Apollo, and we have to decide what we wanna do with them uh, with Salesforce. So that's what we could do with the default fields, but we can do the exact same thing with any custom fields that we've created in Apollo and custom fields that we've created in Salesforce. You do not have to map one-to-one -one every field, right? So there can be fields in Apollo that you don't want mapped into Salesforce, and there can be fields in Salesforce that you don't want mapped to Apollo. With that being said, um, you can do the exact same thing for leads, for accounts, and for opportunities.